All right, I'm here with my uh, friend Kyle. He's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu and he's gonna show us how to choke somebody out with a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, so, you know, it, in, a, in, a, in a street type situation, we've not agreed to tag up and start grappling generally. So it's right. usually, you know, this is coming from a fucking throwing hands position. Sorry about the F word. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's often for many reasons, it's not a great idea to get involved in a boxing match in the street, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for one, it, you know, there's liability in a lot of different, in, you know, in different arenas. It, plus, sometimes you just want to, you want to end this quickly and leave. Uh, the longer we get into a into a, a punch up, the more likely it is that one of us is going to go to sleep. And I don't want it to be me. Right. You know. So generally, what I'm going to do is, is when we're squared up. I'm going to protect myself. Always. I'm never squared up like this. Right. I'm going to turn and blade a little bit so that I'm not a huge target this mm -hmm. way. Um, I'm going to keep my chin tucked, but what I'm not doing is loading up for a boxing match. Generally, a guy is going to load up that rear hand. Right. So when, when, when you go to, to load up the rear hand, I'm going to close distance quickly because I want to smother your punches. Right. So what I need to do is get control of that bicep in the head. So okay. as you go to load up, I'm going to come in here now and, 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 uh, and smother this. I like bicep control here. So quickly, I've closed the distance and now I've smothered his punches. Now, I'm not gonna be amazing at punching from here either, but we're grappling. Okay, so if you'll notice, I come over the top, I wanna control this bicep and I wanna to start to control his head. Now, we'll get into this position here where we're kind of in a tie position. So I've tied up and he might even, he might even mirror this. So he might go to head control here too. Okay, but what we're doing now is if we're ear to ear, and you see guys dancing like this all over the place, we're ear to ear, we're kind of in a neutral position, so we can kind of, we can dance around all we want, but we're kind of in a neutral position, okay? And what I want to do is I want to get control. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sink my shoulder in the joint immediately and get it to where I'm using more of my, of my complete upper body to pull his head down as opposed to just wrenching on it here. So if you'll notice, my shoulder's not up out of the joint. I'm actually pulling back and down and, and engaging my lat. Okay, so now I'm pulling him down here. Okay, what I wanna do is I wanna get his head just below mine and trapped here. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not disengaged. I'm actually pulling down with my lat. Okay, we're still ear to ear. But I've engaged this, so it started to kind of trap his head. I'm keeping this bicep control. Now, what I want to do next is I want to get offline, which means I want to get off his center line to one side. So what I'm going to do here is I've got engaged. Now I'm going to turn so that my forehead is in his ear. And that was immediately different, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I turn, I pull it down here. When I turn my forehead into his ear, I have the upper hand here, you know? You know, now if, if, if he's way off balance and I had this underhook, it's pretty easy to take him to the ground. But more often than not, I've been, I've gone to bicep control and we're here, okay? So I've got my forehead in the ear and I've pinched this in and he's at a distinct disadvantage. What I'm gonna do is use this hand you turn this hand that I was using for bicep control. I'm going to reach over and I'm going to grab his, his the sleeve of his or the, the tail of his shirt, which is not usually something he's going to think about. So, boom, we're here. I'm going to reach over and hard grab this. Now, I've given him an underhook here. It'll, sometimes it'll make him feel confident. But what I've done first is I've stepped off line. If we were here, if I'm on his center line and he has an underhook, this isn't got great for me. This isn't good, you know, unless I'm really cranking a wizard or something like that to get, get over to get uh, to get some leverage advantage. Giving him that underhook's a bad idea if we're here. But if we're here, I'm off. I'm off his center line, okay, and I've grabbed this. So I've he's still he's not able to do much with that underhook. If you want to turn? I've I've reached over the top and I've hard grabbed this. Okay, now it's important to keep contact. Okay, 
I don't want to create space for him to move, okay? So there's a transition in this where I'm going to I'm going to transfer this up and this under, but I don't want to break with the uh with the contact. So what I'm going to do is I'm keeping nice and controlled here. I'm going to pull this up. Okay? Expose his back. Now I'm going to reach inside his collar to make a handle out of this. But the way the way I do that is by not breaking contact. So I'm going to keep contact with his head. Okay, I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to swim this in. And I've never broke contact with his head. Now, this is a handle. Now I'm going to go back to that bicep control. Whoop, here. Okay, but what I have now is a handle of control and a steering wheel. Okay, so if we turn, you can see, boom, we're here again. Now I'm a little back online, right? And he doesn't feel that this is a dangerous position until I go to control and I take him wherever I want. It's a constant cross face, okay? So now for him to be effective punching me, he's gotta, he's gotta create some distance, you know, which he's not gonna be able to control. If he's going to be effective punching from this side, he's going to be punching over and across his own body. It's hard for him to control. So the handle and the bicep control, I like this elbow up is my steering wheel. So I'm going to push it into him often. And he's going to want to push back. And as he pushes back, I'm going to be able to steer him wherever I want him. That's why I call this a dog collar, because basically, wherever I want him to go, drag him around the yard, right? If I want him to, if I want to subdue him, we're going to drag him all over the yard. Now, in a situation where I just want this dude to chill out, it's a good opportunity to have a conversation that you might want to chill out, right? Some people work security and stuff like that, and it's not a great idea to bust someone's head open. You might be grabbing your buddy like this when he's drunk and out of hand somebody you don't want to have to really hurt this could the conversation could stop here you know um but it doesn't it doesn't always get to stop there the good thing about this is it opens up a lot of the collar attacks that we use in jiu-jitsu so i'm going to use this to control okay so for uh for a good cross choke that i like for this entry i'm going to let i'm going to keep this I'm going to keep some tension and keep his head turned this way. This hand is going to loose from the bicep and I'm going to insert my thumb here, just on this other side of my hand. Okay. So I'm in this position here. So now boom, I'm here. I push him away a little bit to come here for the cross choke. Now it's a normal cross choke. I pull in with my elbows and I flare my elbows. So I'm going to pull in there okay like that chamber and that karate punch right mm -hmm. but that chambering where i pull back in this way with the sh with the shirt collar it acts, it acts just like a gi except the shirt will also cut you a little bit it just adds to it you know <laughs> it makes it sharper it makes it shittier right. so so again i have this okay I'm, i've got bicep control I'm going to push his head this way. Now, you'll notice that I'm not creating a bunch of space in fishing. Okay, boom. I keep contact, boom. Now, I push and over. Okay. Now, that look from this side is here. Now, my I got one palm up, one palm down, and I pull back to there. And that's the first submission from standing. Often this doesn't need to go to the ground. If he doesn't get, if he doesn't stop or I just decide to not choke him anymore, he goes unconscious. Right. And then we gently sit him down and leave, right? So, yeah, so that's, that's probably the first and easiest submission to get through from there. Okay. Or if they don't submit, it's a go to sleep from there. Right. Without causing a ton of damage. They just wake up with big hickeys on the side of their neck and a headache. Nice. But uh, yeah, so that's a, that's the first way into this dog collar system, the first entry into that 
standing where I could choke somebody out. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah.